Hi there, thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy. I'm an upcycler and I sold for many, many years clothing, purses, and accessories. But my first love was always my purses. When I started posting online or listing online my items, they were the purses that started everything. And I only did purses for over two years, almost three, only purses. And they're these artsy, um, wearable art is what I call them. Now, this is, I wouldn't call this a tutorial, yet it is. So since this is art, I call this more of a DIY. And I am going to do my very best to simplify this process for you. Now, it looks complicated to a lot of people, but I don't think there's any steps in here that are really hard. It's just knowing how to layer and what steps to take to get to this look. Now, this is a bag that is made out of like a vintage velvet tapestry. Let me give you a closer look. Let me give you a closer look. Okay, so this is a flap bag that you lift up and has a magnetic snap and is fully lined. It has collage fringe, which means just a mixture of different materials. I have lace, suede, ribbon, chains, necklaces, things like that in here. Now, collage fringe bags were one of my most requested bags ever. <laughs> I made tons of those. Now, this one has a wide strap. You can customize, you can have a thinner strap. I'll talk to you about all of that. Here's the tapestry that is on the back. Now, it has a pretty brooch, beautiful trims. You lift up the flap to get into the bag and there's a magnetic snap and pockets inside. Just a luscious, luscious bag. And this is what we're working on today. Let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is make two patterns. And they're fairly simple. So one is a U shape with it straight across the top. And the other one is sort of a circle with a tab sort of shape at the top. Now, if you are comfortable at freehanding, you can make this like I did. I knew I wanted mine to be approximately 13 inches tall by 13. So I took, oops, took a piece of packing paper, or you can use wrapping paper, and I just folded it in half so that I have a nice crease to be the center. And then I just sort of freehanded my U shape, butted it up against the top because I wanted the top straight and cut out half on the fold so that they're symmetrical on both sides. Now this is if you're comfortable freehanding. I'm going to show you sort of a measuring way to do it. We have to do some boring measuring, <laughs> but it'll be worth it. And then this one is about eight by eight if you want to freehand it. But I'm going to bring you in closer and I'm going to show you sort of how to measure it out if you want the shape that I'm using and the size. I'm going to start with this, the larger, the body of the bag. So what I did for this, for you, is cut out a square. It's almost a square, 13 inches tall and 12.75 across, 12 and three quarter across. Um, you can go 13. I just did that because I did this freehand and then I just measured what I had. So that's what I'm starting with. So just take this and fold it in half. Simple so far, right? Okay. Now I'm going to come to this one that I folded in half and just do a little measuring. So here's the fold. I am going to take a marker here and one inch across. I pre-measured these out, but you can 
you know, you'll be using your ruler or whatever if you want to do it this way. One inch across on the open side and make a mark, one inch. Now measure down the side four inches and make a little mark. This is just to help guide you make the same U shape that I have. So one inch in, four inches down, and then from the very top, 7.75 inches down. So seven and three quarters. Okay, and then we have the fold over here. Now, you do have to do a little freehand sketching. So from these dots, just sort of sketch your U shape. It's pretty straight along here. And then we just kind of come down towards the bottom, kind of bulge it out a little bit, and then kind of flatten it back out as you get to the fold. Okay? And then all you do is on the fold, cut it out. And there you have the basic U shape that I am using. Okay, so now for this shape, this will be the flap of the bag. I cut out a an eight by eight inch square and then I folded it in half. Just like that. Now I have a few more measurements because we have that tab to deal with. So what I did here was I measured down, well, first I measured over from the top, here's the open side. Measure over from the top one and a half inches and make a mark. Then I measured down one inch and made a mark. And I'm just going to sort of make a little rectangle right here. Okay, now still on the open side here, I measured down four and a half inches and made a mark. And now this is just a guideline for you to sketch your half circle here. Now I kind of go flat down at the bottom, bulge it out up to that dot, and then up to the corner of that rectangle. and just cut it out. And there, I have that circle with that large tab at the top. Now that the patterns are cut out, I need to pull out the fabrics that I want to use for the bag. And I'm going to use this vintage Italian wedding blanket as my inspiration piece. Now, this I got on eBay. It was about $75 with shipping. These are just beautiful. They're like a tapestry weight. They have chenille loop fringe, flowers, and just so lush. You don't have to use something like this. I know they're pricey. For me, they pay for themselves. I made tons of bags. I had a yellow one once. And far, it far exceeded what I paid for that as far as the money it made me. The bags just were beautiful and sold very well. So let's talk about patterns and colors just for a second. I know that all these colors and things can be sometimes a little intimidating. Like, how do I match the patterns? Well, I can't give you any specific rules, but I'll kind of give you my train of thought about it. Number one, I don't get hung up on scale. You know, the old rule was when you mix and match patterns, you need to have a large pattern with a small, like a large floral with a small check or a small stripe. I throw that rule out the window. And so as far as colors, okay, this is my inspiration piece. Find a piece, maybe a blazer, you don't have to use this. There are so many pretty velvety blazers and things like that with great patterns. So pick one out that you love. And then 
all the other fabrics and trims will be in that color scheme, basically. So I may or may not use all of these, but they would all work. And I'm going to show you why I think they will. Okay, so this has pink in it. And so I found this velvety blazer. It has pink in it and black, okay? This has no black, but it has the pink. So this would work. Now, this blazer is like a floral tapestry. It has pink and green. Well, my wedding blanket has pink and green. So that would work. And this blazer is really cool. I was torn between making the whole purse out of this or the wedding blanket, but so this would work too. It's got pretty pinks and greens and see there's like a burgundy. So all this would work because they have at least one color that's in my wedding blanket. So I'm going to start with this and start cutting my patterns out. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is just find a spot that I think would make a pretty front and back. So with this one, I have to cut out two pieces of fabric, one for the front and one for the back. And then with the flap, I just need to cut out one because I will line it in the back with something different. So I'll take this and I'll just kind of play on my fabric and see what I like. Well, I like these lighter colors and I like the flowers. So I will just cut out a piece right there probably very similar for the front and back. Now, this is super plush, so I can't trace accurately on this, so I'm going to have to turn it over. My lines just wouldn't be straight because of all the velvet, they would twist and turn. Luckily on the back, I don't know if you can see, I can see the pattern through. It's not super vivid, but it's enough that I can trace my pattern. So, I'm just going to place it where I want this one pretty symmetrical. So I'm just going to try to make sure it's even. Okay, I ended up going with sort of a corner piece. So I have the pattern laid out where I want it. And I'm just going to take a marker here since it's the back of the fabric and just trace around my pattern. And once I get that traced, I'll trace another one for the back and I'll cut them out. And then I'll do the same for the flap. Now I have my three pieces cut out and the pattern I'm just going to set aside for later because we'll need that for the lining. And for now, I'm going to set the two larger ones aside. And I like to start with the flat because <laughs> believe it or not, that's usually where the majority of the work goes into. So I'm going to start with that. The first thing I want to do to the flap is put a strip of fabric down the center. Now this is floral and it has a little bit of metallic thread. I cut it two and a half inches wide by eight inches. Now that is from this sort of tapestry tablecloth with flowers on it and some pretty trim. And I just chose an area where the flowers really stood out. Now I need to pin this down and I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make sure it's centered. I like to stick a pin in all four corners and then here I'll stick one in the side. When you have a plush fabric like this that has that pile, pin it really good because this will shift around in the sewing machine. So once I get this pinned, I'm just going to stay as close to the edge as I can without slipping off. And I will sew it with a fairly small straight stitch. I will use gold colored thread, not metallic, and I'll probably use gold on the entire bag and get that sewn on. I usually start at the top in a corner 
and go forward back. Go all the way across. Lift up my presser foot, pivot, and continue down the side. And I'll just do that till I'm all the way around. Okay, so now I got my little center sewn on and I want to trim the sides. So something to cover those raw edges. And I have this pretty scalloped metallic gold and black trim and that's what I'm going to use. Now I'm just laying this trim where I kind of want it just so I can trim it off. Come around and do it to the other side. I usually do it a little bit bigger because I do the fine tuning after I sew. So all I'll do here is I will use a zigzag stitch for this and I will sew right in this, whoops, out of the shot here, this wider part of the trim right here. And I'll kind of correct, see it's kind of shifted, but I can correct that with this trim and make it look straight. And so I'll use my largest zigzag stitch. I'll use a gold thread and I'll start at the top and just sew all the way down till I get to the bottom. And then when I'm all done, I'll trim off the excess. And I'll do that on both sides. Okay, so I'm laying my trim at the very top of the bag. And I like to go over it when I start something like this across the top. That just makes sure all those little fibers and things are, oops, I better set it on the zigzag, are captured. And then I pivot. And I don't pin this or anything. And I'll just cruise down that trim until I get to the bottom. Now I have the trim all sewn on and I'm just going to clip off the extra. Okay. What I want to do is trim this flap in this sagey green bullion fringe. Now this will be lined and turned inside out. So how we sew this on is the fringes have to be facing inside the flap. And I am going to start sewing it at the top of the circle, but not into that tab, so right there. Now I will just take this to my machine and sew it on. You're certainly welcome to pin yours on if you want, but basically you just follow that edge around. And I'm going to come in and do a quarter inch seam allowance, I'll come in about a quarter of an inch, and I will use a fairly small straight stitch, my gold thread, and I will just sew this all the way around the perimeter of the flap. Just like that. Okay, and I'll stop at the top of this circle before I get into the flap. I'll probably stop there and then I will trim this fringe when I'm done. Okay, so now I have that sewn all around. I want to tell you too, I have a denim needle in my machine. Um, this is going to get pretty thick with the fringe and stuff, so if you use a tapestry type fabric and all this fringe, a denim needle is a must. <laughs> okay, just trim off the excess. Okay, so in the past, I have sewn the brooch on at this point, so I like to pin and sew if I have a brooch, if it has spots to sew. But I need to line this and turn it inside out. And 
I find that I really have to shift this around after I sew it and I don't want to weaken my stitching. So I stitch it when I'm all done now. So what I need to do is tuck this back in and find a lining to go on the opposite side. I like to line the flap with the same fabric that I line the entire bag with. And so I'm going to line the bag with this tapestry fabric, but I'm going to use the darker side. I like less contrast with the lining because sometimes you can see it out of the top, you know, in through the top of the bag. And I don't like a huge contrast there. So I'm going to use this darker side because it's less contrast with all the colors of the bag. And so now what I need to do is take my flat pattern and I am just going to trace around it. Now I'm using marker here. I have some nice new Taylor's chalk I need to get out and do this with, but I am in such a habit of using this marker that it's hard not to grab. Okay, so I traced around that and now I just need to cut it out. Now all I do is just make sure all these fringes are tucked in because I need to sew around the edges. Now I'm going to put right sides together. This is a very pretty side, but I feel like this works with my bag better. So this is going to be my right side. So I'm going to put it down on top of the right side of the flap. And this I will pin. I will just start pinning here, pin all the way around to here. And I will leave the top open and unpinned. Now that I have this all pinned, I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to use straight stitch and I'm going to start at the very top. I'll try to stay at quarter of an inch seam allowance. Sometimes you can't help but going a little larger than quarter of an inch just because there's starting to be a lot of stuff sandwiched in there to catch it all, but that's my goal. And I will go all the way around up to the very top. And then once I do that once, I'm going to go around and do it again. I double stitch almost everything when I make a purse. Okay, so I have that all sewn. Now before I turn it inside out, whenever you have a curve, you need to make little notches in the fabric. Uh, you know, as close as you can to that stitch line, but of course not through it. And since this is sort of a small-ish flap, I probably will cut like every three quarters of an inch. So clipping these little pieces of Fabric, excess fabric here just helps it to lay smooth after you turn it inside out. So I'll just go ahead and just keep clipping that all the way around. Now I'm just going to turn it inside out. I have kind of a small opening here and kind of a thick fabric. It will go through, but I'll have to work with it a little bit. So I'll just take my time and get that pushed through. Now I'm at my ironing board and I just want to give this a good press. I have my iron pretty hot and I'm just going to lay a tea towel down over top of it. I need more water more steam in my iron 
And then once I get that pressed really good, I'm going to turn it over because I have a piece I want to sew on top. So I'm going to press the top really well. Now oh, there's some steam. Now I want to just sew a piece of fringe over top of the flap on the colored area here. I basically want to break up some of that bouillon. I like bouillon, but I don't want to see that much of it. So this tapestry um, tablecloth that I had has this really pretty trim on it. So I just seamed ripped some of that off. And I'm going to use that on this flap. What I'll do is I'll choose a side and I actually prefer the wrong side. <laughs> Imagine that. And I am going to start sewing at the very top of this tab. And then I'll overlap this trim a quarter of an inch onto this velvet. So I'll start here. I won't pin this. I'll start in my machine. And I will use a zigzag stitch, my largest zigzag stitch. And I will just sew sort of along the edge here, about a quarter of an inch in onto the velvet. And I'm going to sew that all the way around till I get to the top right here. Okay. So I have that sewn on, and you see it's kind of sticking up a little bit. Sometimes these things have a mind of their own. I'm going to set my machine on a straight stitch, and I'm going to do another row of stitching just below that. And it looks like I'll still be right on the edge of that velvet, just so it will stay down. And while I'm sitting here, see we still have an open top here. It's not necessary to sew this shut because it will be sewn onto the bag. But sometimes I like to do it when I start to see a lot of fraying. I'm going to stitch that shut so that just a quick st stitch right over the top so we don't have any more fraying happening there. Okay, so here's my flap so far. There's the back. Now what I want to do is just put my brooch on. I have this pretty brooch with a rose on it and some rhinestones. Now, I first pin it on before I sew. Now, if you want to put it in the center, keep in mind that this top part of the flap will be attached to the back of the bag and flip over the front. So you're losing a good portion of the flap there. So when you place something, take that into consideration. So I typically go lower. Let's see, I would lose about this much visually from the front. So I will place this brooch accordingly. So if you can see when I open it up, that's lower than halfway. So I'll kind of pin this on and get it where I like it. And then I'll show you how I sew it. So this is where I placed my brooch. You know, at this point, I have sewn, before I pin my brooch on, some charms and chains right here or fringe. But I'm just going to leave this one fairly simple. Now I'm going to, it's pinned on. And I am going to sew this in four different spots. Now, whatever your embellishment is, it just depends on where you sew, wherever you see like a good gap. And I'm going to sew mine right underneath each pearl I'll, on these four. And so I start, I'll come through the back, try to find right below my little pearl. I have my needle, the thread doubled and knotted, and then I will just come on the, let's see, the opposite side of this pearl, 
and go back through. And I will do that pretty securely, probably at least six stitches underneath each purl. And then um, I match the thread always with the hardware that I'm sewing it to. Um, if this was silver, I might use gray thread. Since this is gold, I'm using a gold colored thread. I'm not using metallic. So now I'm on the back. I will just keep coming up and through. And I may go more than six. It just depends how secure it's feeling to me. So I'll just go ahead and get that sewn on in those four spots. <laughs> 